Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, uh, I fired up. <laughs> I said I fired up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why? So why are you fired up? I don't know. I have no idea. All right. Okay. I'm not drunk yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is the last section, last part. Unit economics and finance. Okay, I got here. All right, accounting and finance. Entrepreneurs need to be familiar with accounting and finance for making correct decisions and doing communication with stakeholders. You don't need to be an accountant, right? You don't need to be an accountant, so you don't need to calculate. You don't need to make a balance sheet or a profit and loss statement or whatever. You don't need to do it, but you are at least familiar with. You should be familiar with those kind of things. And uh, managerial accounting, we are going to discuss. We are going to work on managerial accounting from now. Uh, there are three types of accounting. One is managerial accounting. Another is uh, second one is financial accounting. Third one is a tax accounting. Managerial accounting is a Accounting for decision making inside companies, right? And financial accounting is accounting for reporting to outside stakeholders. So uh, the format is uh, decided by regulations, like uh, you know, co company laws or something. So making BS or PL or cash flow statement is based on this financial accounting. And third one is tax accounting. This is accounting for calculating taxable income. It's not for not so uh, important for uh, many of uh, entrepreneurs, but you know it's qu quite important if you want to uh, decrease uh, tax payment, like Amazon, right? But anyway, for making decision, for making your managerial decision as a as an entrepreneur inside your company, this is very important managerial accounting, right? Okay, then in managerial accounting, the first action we should do is consider cost, consider cost. And uh, we will split costs into two kinds of cost, two kinds of cost, based on cost behavior, cost behavior. Okay? One is variable cost, hendohi. Cost vary depending on the company's sales and production. And another is fixed cost, kotehi, periodic cost that remain unchanged, less fixed of a company's sales or production. It's stable fixed cost. Okay. For example, in a supermarket case, the variable cost includes cost of goods sold, cost of purchasing their, pro uh, their uh, item to be sold, or uh, cost for plastic bags or brown bags, things like that. And uh, their fixed cost include rent expense of supermarket, or personal expense for their cashiers or other stuff. And cost for lighting, power, and water, whatever, is also included in fixed cost. And steel manufacturing company's case, relatively many variable costs they have, uh, including raw material, gas, oil, electricity, and power, uh, water, expense for production, for production. Electricity cost for their uh, headquarters is included in fixed cost, right? And their processing cost or subcontract cost for manufacturing are included in variable cost because those costs varied depending on production and sales, okay? And fixed cost of steel manufacturing company includes office rent expense and depreciation cost and personal expense for non-manufacturing staff, including 
uh, administration, personal department, marketing, sales, and so on and so forth. And uh, consulting firm, consulting firms example, uh, they have less variable cost, very small portion of variable co cost. The photocopy of their uh, reporting and something very small. And their uh, office rent cost or their advertisement cost, Accenture paints huge amount of advertising cost because of, uh, in order to build their brand reputation. And uh, their personal expense for consultant and management staff, administration staff, are all included in fixed cost, right? So the mixture of fixed cost and variable cost are different industry by industry, okay? It's not same for all company. And dividing uh, variable cost, uh, dividing cost into variable cost and fixed cost is for doing decision making, for doing the decision making. And for, in do for doing that decision making, using variable cost, we can calculate this profit, marginal profit, marginal profit. So called genkai riyeki or koken riyeki in Japanese marginal profit. After dividing costs into variable and fixed costs, you can calculate marginal profit, then marginal profit equal revenue minus variable cost, variable cost. Marginal profit changes, changes, varies, depending on revenue or product, production, increase or decrease. Revenue increased, marginal profit increase. Revenue decrease, marginal profit decrease. It's changed depending on revenue or production changes, right? And by getting this, uh, you can get another number or another point that is break even point. Break even point. Soneki bunkiten in Japanese. Break even point is the point at which revenue equal to total cost, i.e. zero profit, zero profit. This is a chart, illustrative chart. The x-axis is revenue, y-axis is cost. And this line is a fixed cost line. In this case, three million watts or something. And uh, this line, this line is the line of total cost, right? Total cost. This is a fixed cost line. And this part, triangle, is variable cost. And this plus this is total cost, right? When this company's revenue is 10 million, the fixed cost is three million. When the company's revenue is zero million, the fixed cost is also zero million. Sorry, three million, three million. And when the company's revenue is 10 million, the variable cost is five million. But if the company's revenue is decreasing, variable cost also decreases until zero. When the revenue is zero, okay? This is very uh, simple and illustrative chart for showing the concept of break-even points. And here, you can see the line. This is the line of y equal x, y equal x. y is cost, x is revenue, and this line is y equal a x plus b, a x plus b. A is percentage of variable cost, right? Percentage of variable cost. And b is, 
this point, fixed cost, right? Fixed cost. Then, in order to get this point, you would put this, you would solve these, you know, equations, and you can get this point, crossing point, break-even point. In this case, break-even point is six million, and this is a lost, right? And this area is profit. Okay. Revenue is exceed break-even point. You can enjoy profit. This is total cost line. This is uh, revenue line. And revenue when revenue does not exceed break-even point, your revenue is under total cost. Okay, so you will suffer from loss in here. And break-even point can be calculated by using the following formula, this formula. Fixed cost divided by one minus variable cost ratio. Fixed cost divided by one minus variable cost ratio. You can come up with this formula by putting, sorry, y equals x into this equation, you can come up with this formula. And this formula is one minus variable cost ratio means marginal profit ratio, okay? Revenue minus variable cost equal marginal profit, okay? So those two things are same, those two formula are same, okay? Right? So you can uh, memorize this formula for getting break-even point calculation. You can memorize it or you can use this equation, break-even point revenue minus variable cost minus fixed cost equals zero, right? This is a break-even point. So you can change this, convert this equation into this one, right? You can use it or you can just remind this chart and put y equal x into y equal a x plus b. Anyway, it would be okay, right? So we want to calculate the very simple, using very simple case, we want to calculate the break-even point for uh, imaginary companies uh, before starting your business, getting, knowing break-even point in which you can make profit is important, right? How, how far should I go before getting profit? It should be known, right? So let us calculate the break-even points in those two cases. Company A, there are company A and company B, both companies have same amount of revenue, 100 and 100. Same amount of cost, 80 and 80. And same amount of profit, 20, 20. Same revenue, same profit. But their mixture of variable cost and fixed cost are different. In company A, variable cost is 30, fixed cost is 50. In company B, variable cost 50, fixed cost 30, okay? For those two cases, two companies' cases, what is your, uh, what is uh, break-even point revenue? 
okay, calculated using this formula, all right? Any question? Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Very simple calculation. It's the first time for doing such a silent exercise, right? Ah, uh, yes. Three minutes, five minutes, three minutes. First, uh, calculate the marginal profit ratio or variable profit ratio, either one will be okay. And then, if you calculate marginal profit ratio, divide fixed cost by marginal profit ratio, so that you can get break-even point revenue. And uh, for company A, uh, you have to round the number, and for company B, you will get the very Kirinoi uh, number. <laughs> how can I? How can I say exact number? Okay, good. All right. Marginal profit ratio is marginal profit divided by revenue. Variable cost ratio is variable cost divided by revenue. It's a percentage. Company A, you have variable cost salary, so Marginal profit is revenue minus variable cost, right? Revenue minus variable cost. Revenue is 100, variable cost is 30, so marginal profit is 70, right? And because revenue is 100, marginal cost, marginal profit, sorry, marginal profit ratio is 70 divided by 100, it's gonna be 70%, okay, 70%. Company B, variable cost is 50, so because revenue is 100, marginal profit is 100 minus 50, it's gonna be 50, marginal profit is 50, and marginal profit ratio is 50 divided by 100, so that is 50%, right? Then, using those marginal profit ratio, divide fixed cost by marginal profit. We need more time. Company B, 
Right, right. They see. didn't come up with your uh, right answer, don't worry about it. Uh, it is important to understand what it means and what uh, the understanding the, the concept of break-even points and variable cost and fixed cost and marginal profit is important, not getting the right answer right now, okay? So in company A, Marginal profit ratio is 70%, okay, 70%. Marginal profit is 100 minus 30. 30 is variable cost, right? So 70 is marginal profit in company A. And 100 is revenue, so marginal profit ratio is 70%, okay? And in this company's case, the fixed cost, fixed cost is 50, right? So fixed cost divided by marginal profit ratio, 50 divided by 70% is break even point revenue. So it's not Chinoy number, you can get 71 or so, right? And in company B, the marginal profit is 50, right? Because variable cost is 50 in this case, this company. So 100 minus 50 is 50. And marginal profit ratio is marginal profit divided by revenue. So 50 divided by 100. So 50% is marginal profit ratio. And in this company, Fixed cost is 30. So fixed cost divided by marginal profit ratio, 30 divided by 50%, so that you can get break even point revenue 60. Okay? You see what I mean? All right. In this case, in this case, both companies have same revenue same amount of revenue. Both companies have same amount of profit, right? And in financial accounting, by seeing profit, profit and loss statement, PL, or income statement, IS, you cannot see this variable cost or fixed cost. But using managerial accounting, you can see, you can divide cost into variable cost and fixed cost based on their cost behavior. So even though those two companies have same amount of revenue and same amount of profit, their break-even points will be different. Right? Break-even point will be different. So the knowing the cost mixture of fixed cost and variable cost is important for knowing what amount should we sell for making profit, okay? Well, do you think which one is preferable? B? Okay. Why? Why B? Thank you. Have enough resource or money at first, mm -hmm. like uh, 
we are uh, assumed as entrepreneur mm-hmm. is very so I- if it the uh, profit rate is not so high mm-hmm. i think the first step is to make profit so i think b is mm-hmm. more easy to get profit so mm-hmm. i think b is better okay yeah. okay yep good as a comment right maybe the fixed cost Compared to company A, fixed cost is mm. mm. 50, mm-hmm. but company B's fixed cost is 30. Mm-hmm. So maybe the fixed cost, the more fixed cost is lower, mm-hmm. it's better because the variable cost may change. Mm-hmm. So it has the possibility to change a lot. Okay. And uh, the results, the 71 and 60, mm-hmm. in the page 67 graph, Maybe this point, the, m- the more this point left, it's better because the profit area become large, mm-hmm. I think. Okay, so you think uh, company A is preferable? Company B. Uh, company B. Huh? Right? You said company B is preferable, right? Yeah. Uh, because of low. Fixed cost. Yes. Okay. So yes, yes. thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Uh, it's correct. Great. Great comment. Uh, correct. For entrepreneur, before starting up, company B might be preferable because you can exceed break-even point faster than company A's structure. Okay. That might be correct. But look at this. These are uh, illustrative chart. This one is a uh, company A type chart. It's exaggerating a lot. Higher fixed cost, lower variable cost, right? So higher break even point. Okay. This is a uh, company B type chart. <laughs> Very pretty much exaggerating, but lower uh, fixed cost and higher variable cost. Because bre- uh, fixed cost is lower, break even point is lower. But uh, once you exceed the break even point, how come the result? See? Right? In this case, you can enjoy higher profit. You can enjoy higher profit because variable cost is skinny. In this case, you can exceed earlier the break even point, but you can enjoy only skinny profit. Right? So it's kind of difference, just difference. And if you are a very uh, ambitious guy and you are uh, strongly, you have strong confidence to, oh, hey, I'm, I can't break, I can exceed this break even points area. This company A type structure might be preferable for you. So it depends on the situation, depends on what your characteristics or what the market is going on, right? So it's different. Anyway, thinking about the mi- mixture of variable cost and fixed cost is very important for knowing which point should we reach in order to, at least in order to uh, get a profit, right? Okay, uh, any question about it? Okay. So can I just a question for about the industry? Mm-hmm. Like <coughs> for example, if the in the industry in which <coughs> the entry barrier is very low, like so mm, like big company is very so like the right one mm-hmm. is depend on the, the high variable cost. So variable cost is like Mm, it's variable. 
So if the big company enter the that market, the variable cost is gonna be like lower compared to like startup company. So I think it's better to, mm, if possible, it's better to be like the right left one if we gonna do startup. So wh what do you think about it? It's you see the you mentioned the mm. entry barrier. うん、あ、じゃあ日本日本より行くか。もちろん。あ、えっと、なんかプレファラブル。大企業。なんか大企業が参入しやすい市場とかだったら、結構なんかその右の方のビジネスモデルってなんかバリアブルコストの割合が高
as, I'm sorry, other kinds of break-even points. We can get four kinds of break-even points by using this. Okay, uh, let's look at this. Uh, this is uh, the, uh, the case, imaginary case of an Italian restaurant. This part, unit economics show the price and variable cost and marginal profit, right? Uh, this is the explanation of them. In this restaurant, let's see, price revenue per customer is 3,000 yen. And uh, variable cost, cost of food material and, and uh, uh, fuel or something, is 2,000 yen. And the price minus variable cost is marginal profit, okay? 3,000 minus 2,000 is 1,000 marginal profit, marginal profit. That is unit economics of this Italian restaurant case. And this one, Q, stands for quantity, volume, right? The number of person coming to this restaurant, assuming uh, per month, uh, 1,000 customers are coming to this restaurant in this month. Then, multiply unit economics times volume equal whole economics of this restaurant, right? PQ means P times Q, it's revenue, right? Price times quantity is revenue, okay? Revenue amount is divided into price times quantity volume. And this is three million yen, three thousand thousand yen. So three million yen, three thousand yen plus March price, one thousand quantity persons, equal three million yen revenue in this month. Okay, and VQ as variable cost, total variable cost, is. 2 million, 2,000 variable cost per unit times 1,000 quantity person. And MQ equal total marginal profit, total marginal profit in this month is 1 million, 3 million minus 2 million. And F stands for fixed cost, including personal cost for cook or cashier, main staff, and rent cost, water, gas, and so on. It's 800,000 yen, right? And G stands for gain, final profit is 1,000 minus 800 equal 200, okay? Final profit is 200,000 yen in this month, right? Okay, this is a economics of this Italian restaurant's case in this month. Then, this structure is used for decision making or for getting more detailed break-even points, right? So, by dividing your cost into variable cost and fixed cost, and by getting unit economics, you can use this cost structure and price structure and whole economics structure. And assuming that this Italian restaurant last this month's economics is like this, the next page shows a new question for you. Volume of this Italian restaurant, volume means customer, number of customers decreased by 10% because of a brand new restaurant open nearby your restaurant, your Italian restaurant. How will the following numbers be changed? How will 
the following numbers will, will be changed, okay? All right, so go on to the next page and uh, calculate it, right? Uh, not next page, in the page below, right? Okay, the quantity goes down by 10%, right? So something will be changed in here and calculate final profit, G, right? Let's do it. It's very simple question, simple calculation. If you have any question, please raise your hand. Increase quantity by 10% and using that quantity, multiply quantity times price and get PQ, right? And get VQ and get MQ and get G, right? Do I need more time? Okay. Right, let's see the answer. This is the answer. You got it? 100, 100, plus 100, right? Quantity is decreased by 10%, 10%, and gain is remained at plus 100, right? Although it was decreased by 50% from before, but still remain at profitable number, okay? 10% quantity decrease makes profit half, all right? Okay, then the next page, price down, price down. Because you don't want to lose your customers by 10%, so you thought you should cut down price by 10% instead. And assume quantity is not changed in this case, right? So just change price by 10% and calculate remaining numbers. How the gain goes. In this case, price would be decreased by 10% and quantity is not be changed stable. So PQ means revenue, total revenue is decreased by 10%, the same as before, right? Then what kind of profit you will get? Next, next slide, uh, I think BQ, B, BQ is 2,000, but in this slide, uh, BQ is... BQ is... Uh, in this slide, BQ is, yes, 1,800, uh, 1, but I think BQ is 2,000. In the next slide. Next slide. Yeah, yeah.
Oh, yes. Yeah, big issue be... Uh, yes. In 2000. You, you're right. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. It's typo. Big mistake. Sorry. It's kind of trap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. Sorry about it. You got this number? You got this? Negative 100, right? Negative 100. By cutting down price by 10%, Final profit G goes to negative. Although PQ was same as before, right? Ten percent down, but cutting price by ten percent goes this number to negative one, right? The outcome was different. Okay. All right. The another one. Quantity up. Or quantity up. This is also VQ is 2000. Sorry about it. It's not big issue in here. Okay. All right. In order to go back to break even point, i.e., zero profit from this situation below, how many quantities needed? How many quantities needed? Calculate quantity at the point in which G equals zero, right? Profit equals zero. In that case, G equals zero case, MQ margin times quantity, marginal profit times quantity equal to fixed cost, okay? This one should be equal to this one. For getting the same amount of MQ, how many quantity should we need, right? Use this marginal profit, 700. MQ should be increased to 800,000 for getting zero profit. And uh, for getting that amount of MQ, you can, you should get certain amount of quantity for getting that quantity you can calculate by using M and MQ. MQ equal 800,000 M equal 700, so Q equal, it's not exact number again, it's not Kiri no E number, ne? Okay. Shitsukoi ne, sankai me yon ne. I'll say a couple of times more, all right. Let's see this, right? You got this number? 1143, 1143, right? MQ equal F for getting zero G, 800,000, and divide 800,000 by 700 marginal profit, you can come up with 1,143 customers. Right. So, in order to reach, in order to 
back to break-even point, you need to increase quantity by 14.3 percent, right? Not going back to the original profit, 200, just going back to zero profit, you have to increase quantity by 14.3 percent. So getting profit back after cutting down price is a little bit tough, right? You see? And this number, quantity, is break-even point quantity, break-even point quantity. Before doing that calculation, we calculated break-even point revenue, right? Break-even point revenue. In this case, you got break-even point quantity, okay? And by using this uh, MQ accounting chart structure, you can calculate four kinds of break-even points, right? Break-even point is in which G equals zero. You can calculate break-even point price, break-even point quantity, break-even point variable cost, Unit variable cost, break-even point, fixed cost, okay? You can calculate four kinds of break-even points. That is more detailed calculation you can, right? Then the, you don't need to remember this formula. Don't need to remember. Just using this structure, you can easily calculate it. Because G equals zero is a break-even point. In case G equals zero, MQ equals F. So you can calculate. You can change price, variable cost, quantity, or fixed cost, right? Then in this case, in this Italian restaurant case, we got four break-even points. This is four labels to be changed. This is a status quo numbers, and this is a break-even point numbers, right? And this is sensitivity percentage. The smaller the number is, the sensitivity is higher, okay? You can, uh, uh, you would go to sell profit only by decreasing price by 6.7 percent, okay? You would go to zero profit. You should, you not you should, should. You, uh, the fixed cost could be up to 25 percent, okay? It's less sensitive, it's more sensitive, right? And this is uh, that uh, Italian restaurant case calculation. And the next one is the three types of cost structure are shown, right? The, this one is type A, higher fixed cost, 80% variable cost, Sorry, 80% marginal profit, 20% variable cost. The type B is balanced, 50% variable cost. Type C, lower fixed cost, 80% variable cost, right? In this case, you can calculate the sensitivity of four levels. And number two, number three, number four, are different based on the cost of structure changes, okay? But number one is always price. You see? Price sensitivity to against profit is always the highest, right? This is very important. It's very important. 
and uh, even in experienced, well experienced business persons, someone do not know it. And making decision about pricing without knowing this is fairly dangerous. Okay. This is a uh, actual research result done by McKinsey. Uh, this is a number of all the listed companies to Tokyo Stock Exchange first section. So bunch of researchers and they came up with these numbers. The question is, forgetting these numbers, the question, they quest, uh, ask a question, uh, by improving four levels, price, variable cost, quantity, and fixed cost, only by 1%, only by 1%. How much EBIT, EBIT means uh, operating profit, earning before interest and tax, EBIT, operating profit, would be increased, right? This is the uh, sensitivity calculation from uh, opposite side, right? Then number one is price. This is the uh, average number of all stock exchange listed company, right? Number one is price, 23.2% increase, only by 1% price increase, okay? Huge, it's huge, huge, EBIT increase could be realized by only 1% increase of price, right? Number two, variable cost. Variable cost decrease by 1%, then get 16% EBIT increase. And quantity and fixed cost, all right? So, okay. Our question is why is Japanese company already sensitive to the price? Because it, it doesn't mean like the Japanese nation is also really sensitive. So that's why the company has to be more sensitive. No, it's not because they are Japanese companies. It's same as in any country, any country. Yeah. I got only numbers because this research uh, in Japan, because this research is done by McKinsey Tokyo office. So, but not quite different in the States. Yes. It's the nature of the business. Yes, nature of the business. Yeah, it's yeah. fundamental nature of the business. That's that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. So that it's right. So in any cases, price is number one. Price is number one, and uh, once you come up with concrete idea of business, you should consider. You should think about your cost. What kind of cost I gonna I uh, I'm gonna uh, have in future, and uh, imagine the mixture of variable cost and fixed cost, and uh, you can get the sensitivity of each level of your business. But anyway, price is the most sensitive level. That's true for every industry, okay? Every com company. Uh, pricing is important. The most sensitive level is P. In real business, but however, I know it, but price increase is very tough action, you know? So because degree of demand change by price increase is uncertain, it's same as consumption tax increase. And in B2B business, sometimes we need to do hard negotiation with our important customers. So pricing increase is a very tough decision, tough action to execute. However, you should at least recognize how important pricing is, how sensitive pricing 
change is. Without knowing that, doing decision, making decision is going to be very dangerous, right? So you should know it. One, thi one thing I want to add. Yep. Do you probably know that your value proposition directly relates to here. Yep. Right? Because if your value proposition is unique, and new, mm. and different, then you don't suffer with your pricing. And if your CVCA is attractive to your customer, then you don't suffer here. You enjoy this, actually, right? So y th are you connecting all the dots in your brain? Yeah? Great, great, yes. Uh, or do you have any uh, example of business model or business domain that has uh, uh, that uh, the pricing is the second important, the third important? No. There's no. That doesn't Definitely exist. no. 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 Or can we invent or no? No. Definitely no. Ne definitely no. Okay. I I want to know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If you invent that kind of business model, I want to know. I okay. want to know. Yes. Nature, nature of business. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good question and good uh, challenge <laughs> we can do. Right? And as Ishibashi-san said, the pricing is closely related to value proposition to customers. Right? This is unit economics. And I showed, I didn't show the value to customers in the MQ accounting structure before, but actually there is a value to customers it, that is called willingness to pay, right? This is price, this is variable cost, and price minus variable cost is margin profit. You want to get higher margin profit, you want to get higher price, but you cannot go beyond the uh, value to customers, definitely not. No one will buy it, okay? So value to customers must be higher than price. And you want to increase value recognized by customers by delivering stories, messages, value proportions, your love, your logic to customers for realizing higher value recognition and higher willingness to pay. By doing that, you can enjoy higher price. Without doing that, you cannot do it, right? And uh, important and uh, difficult thing is value is not fixed. Value is not same for everyone. It depends on person to person. It depends on customers. It depends on what story you deliver. It depends on even context. Or it depends on emergency or whatever. Anyway, value is not fixed. So, and value is not explicitly quantified, right? So it's difficult, but you should try to know what value customers can recognize. And you should try to increase the value, right? And also, you should try to decrease variable cost for getting more marginal profit. That is unit economics, right? Do you have any question about it? to, uh, like you said, the value should be higher than price, right? Mm -hmm. So um, to decide price, you need to understand uh, what value or how big the value, uh, your value uh, that your product can provide to customer. 
So how can you measure the value that uh, your product uh, yeah, can? Yeah, good uh, question, good question. Because uh, maybe you, you know some uh, methodologies or some tools that can help people to calculate or to measure that value. Because uh, some product is really new, so you, can, uh, you cannot compare with uh, uh, other pro existing product. Yes, very great question, very great, great question. And uh, it's bad news. I have to give bad news to you. No absolute methodology on it. Sorry about it. I want to get it. I tried many times. But I wrote, uh, read a bunch of books about pricing. No, no. And uh, we use the uh, interviewing uh, and uh, some market research, many other stuff. We can do it, but no <laughs> absolute way methodology and no, no absolute way to get uh, uh, value, okay? So uh, I hope you can invent it. <laughs> In, in, our, in our project with Tomita-san, we tried price sensitivity. So we were, I should not be talking about this. So we tried, we tried to ask different prices and see what kind of reaction they would get. And then we, find, we tried to find out the curve, how, mu how much they think it's too, exen too expensive, how much they think it's too cheap. So we tried something like that to find out the right position of the of the price compared to the value because we don't know this. So we were kind of looking for the right position to sit. So that we we tried something like that. So there are some te techniques to try to do so, but there is not absolute answer for that. And I want to know that too. Yeah. Do you think that the quantity of customer is acting a role for? Uh, Pricing, decision making. Quantity, the number Quantity of yeah, a number of customer. Because no. uh, I think according the uh, calculation of P, Q, V, and F, mm -hmm. the quantity is acting the uh, a role for um, to decide how sensitive a P is. Is that correct? If the quantity, uh, the number of customer is increased, so I think P. Uh, maybe more uh, sensitive. Uh, in that sense, uh, it's not correct. Oh. It's not correct. The, uh, but the it's good question. It's good question because you know the uh, decreasing price, you can reach more size, bigger size of market, right? So quantity is going to be increased, right? Then I we did so many uh, uh, interviewing and uh, so many researches on prospective customers, and our in insight got through that activities is the value to customers are widely spread from here to here. And uh, that insight gave us um, advice to not focusing on that customers. Okay, and we should target out those customers can recognize barriers we are want to deliver to them. Right, in that ac doing that action the quantity is going to be decreased, right? So quantity and value and price are closely related to each other. So in that sense, it's related to each other. But the sensitivity is coming from the cost structure, so not from quantity, okay? Good question, great question. Any question? It's not really com 
uh, question, but uh, sometimes I, f I face the, the, pro pro the issue that uh, the price is controlled by their channel, big channel, meaning like re retailer, mm. traditional retailer. So I cannot control the price. Right. What do you think, uh, wh what is the solution? Sh should I change the channel or that? I think that's it. that's easy p solution. But do you what do you have any uh, any other ideas to overcome? Uh, is that uh, wha what is the product you are um, handling? Um, uh, healthy food, kind of. Healthy food. Yes. Okay. The controlling uh, price, retail price, is uh, politically incorrect action, right? You cannot do it, right? Oh, yeah. Many <laughs> yeah. always does so. Does right, yes. Yeah. And, uh, well, your, your uh, wholesaler or manufacturer, ma manufacturer, and you want to control the retail price to end users for Keeping your brand or product, okay. That's yeah, also great question. And uh, in the car detailing market, we had the uh, same kind of problem. In that case, uh, we uh, designed the. Uh, dealer networks all over the Japan all over Japan based on their uh, cooperativeness to manufacturers and their their uh, following level of quality standard uh, which manufacturers set right so that is not uh, giving the price control directly but implying that right so uh, you cannot do it for controlling the retail price directly but you can do it by using many as a stuff and uh, you can do it indirectly yeah it's tough I know it's tough it's a very good question and many many uh, companies uh, manufacturers are facing that problem great great comment thank you Maybe I don't quite understand the content, so I want to ask about. Uh, could you please back to page eighty-two? It's this one. This one, okay. Yes, um, I can ima image uh, one company can improve the levers. Uh, Price, variable cost, fixed cost, by one percent. Mm -hmm. But how can company improve the levels quantity mm -hmm. by one percent on their own? Oh yes, it's uh, theoretically calculation. Mm -hmm. It's theoretically calculation. So uh, it's simulation. In case the price is increased by one percent, in case Quantity is increased by one percent. In case variable cost decreased by one percent. In case fixed cost decreased by one percent. This is so. We yeah. simulate the outcome. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's, it's like a retrospective um, yeah. calculation. It's um, you based know, it's on the cost, cost structure. Right. Based on cost structure. And then you tweak around the numbers. Then yeah. you see it. Yeah. I see. Up. So, I I thought to calculate. The quantity mm -hmm. uh, is not so uh, meaningful because they cannot uh, change mm -hmm. the people uh, amount of people mm -hmm. on their own. Right? Uh, it is my 
thing incorrect? Right. So your quanti you cannot control the quantity. It's right, just right. a retrospective. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see. Yeah, seen at your effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's like a theoretical challenge, a theoretical test. What if quantity changes for one percent? What if um, pr you know price changes for one percent? Okay. Yeah. So that's. I got it. Yeah. yeah. I got yeah. it. Thank yeah. you. Correct. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Um, one, one. My question is um, the relationship between variable cost and the quantity. Mm -hmm. um, about an Italian restaurant case study, mm -hmm. we have been doing exercises by changing the quantity of the of the the sales, mm -hmm. and but we didn't. Wha but in units of economics, mm -hmm. we didn't change the variable cost. Mm -hmm. And from the definition of variable cost, mm -hmm. um, the more we sell, the more the cost the, the cost will go up. Yeah. But in yeah. In total, in total variable cost, by definition, mm -hmm. more sales we get, mm -hmm. more variable cost, right? Yeah. But in per per unit, I, unit. Wa I was thinking about. Um, Perhaps if we if we sell more pasta, uh -huh. then we perhaps we we can buy pasta from <laughs> get it cheaper All and right, then right, right. we but we don't have to think about that. Yeah, uh, at the moment. In in at the moment, you don't have to think about it. But in real business, you're right. You're right. So most of the thing that we talked here is static because you can tweak around. You can make every single numbers dynamic. Because it changes every day almost, right? So, but to get you started, the very static, very basic equation is just enough to understand the concept. But that's a good point. Yeah, every good point, good number point. has a volatility. Every number changes like almost every day. Yeah. In yeah. a real business. Great question. Thank yeah. you. Even fixed cost is the same, right? Fixed cost is not fixed <laughs> in the air business, right? Almost fixed, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> like this. <one. laughs> okay, all right. Uh, let's get. Okay, go ahead. Oh, uh, I'd like to ask you that uh, there's a standard, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which a uh, maker uh, asks a retail shop to okay. sell up, right? Okay. And, uh, I was wondering that uh, how to set a standard price and and. Uh, a price to uh, sell at a retail shop. So mm -hmm. how uh, does that uh, make a uh, mm -hmm. set, uh, standard price uh, if you know uh, to sell it? Uh, how to set the standard price, right? That's, uh, uh, we, uh, in these days, we call it MSRP, Maker Suggested Retail Price, ma Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price. Uh, we have to uh, force retailers the price, right? So we can only suggest them. And that uh, pricing is uh, set based on bunch of factors, right? Uh, for example, the pricing uh, is delivering certain message to customers, hey, this product is uh, ranked at this level or that level or this level, so uh, pricing uh, to is the, 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 the message to customers or the profit uh, the manufacturer would get s by selling that product. Profit the retailers would get by selling that product. And more the, the most important thing is value the customer would recognize uh, on that product, okay? So considering those many factors, we set price, we set price, okay? So it's not also, uh, there is no uh, absolute methodology to set MSRP, right? So is that mean uh, MSRP uh, is a one, uh, one method to uh, propose the value proposition? Um, mm, don't think so. Uh, you think so? It's uh, I'm just curious about this. The selling price yes. 
is uh, one method of delivering value proposition to customer? Uh, I'd like to ask you. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no. The uh, selling price is uh, just setting, setting price. For delivering value proposition to customers, you should uh, think about the value the uh, products or service will deliver to customers, right? And uh, of course, the price is the cost to customers. So by paying the cost to that products or uh, services, customer will get some uh, appreciation on that. In that sense, the price is related to the value customer will get, but setting price is not the method of delivering value proposition, right? So thank you. <coughs> Although I asked a similar question in the same lecture, but I'm please, l please let me uh, ask again. Uh, I have two questions. The firstly, in the so in the uh, MQ accounting, MQ accounting, the there are some many uh, how to decide a time range. So the the quantity per day or per year. So there are ma there are many how to decide the uh, time range. So. Is there any other mm, frequent usage about uh, time range or how to dis decide? Yeah. No? It it's depends. It depends? It's totally depends, mm. yes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> the second question is, <coughs> so how we, uh, how we treat the initial investment? So we, the, the, so we for the initiated with uh, initial investment for mm. the buildings or uh, ma manufacturing machines. So how we add? So do we have to uh, depreciate and add to the uh, fixed cost or variable cost? Uh, how 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 do we? Yes, do that's very good question. Very good question. The initial investment is actually outside of this MQ accounting. It is more finance stuff. More. Uh, more finance stuff, right? And uh, for reflecting on this, as you said, we should calculate depreciation cost based on the investment amount, but not uh, directly cannot be reflected to the this MK accounting, right? So for for reflecting reflecting the uh, investment cost, we should calculate the value of investing, value of investing, i.e. the present value of uncertain future cash flow discounted to today, discount back to today, and comparing this to investment. Investment is money, right, cash, very certain one. So comparing a certain at present, certainty at present, and uncertainty in future, and you are gonna make a decision, right? This is uh, more finance stuff, so maybe uh, we can do it uh, on day eight. <laughs> anyway, so uh, just kidding, but uh, you know, it's good question. It's outside of this MK accounting. And as for the time frame, uh, it depends, but as for Unit, it depends also. You see, the in this case, this unit economics is calculated based on person, but in some time, it can be calculated based on table or minute or whatever, right? So uh, we have to choose the most meaningful unit for doing this MK accounting. Good question. 
Thank you. Since we just you know have only this amount of time, so we're only focusing on marginal accounting. So that's why we're missing out a lot. But this is a good start. So this is a good start. So if you're interested, you can read. You can ask him for recommended books that to read. So, but you don't have to know all. You don't have to know all, but you don't. You need to understand some of the concepts. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Let's take a short break and eight minutes break and get back to here at 5.30, okay? See you then, 5.30.